video is going to be a compilation of questions. Just to clarify, what are these videos about? These videos have several purposes. One is to show essentially my daily life. When I was in Hiron, I would walk through the town, I would show where I would do some shopping, where I'd grab some lunch. Here in Cuenca, I've always gone to various parks and just give you a taste, a flavor of what's going on. What it's like to go shopping, for example. I've gone to Mercados, I've gone to the supermarkets. So that if you're planning on coming here, you get an idea of what your life might be like. And as I always say, these videos are my experience, so they're my truth. You may come and find a different truth. You may find a different way to live. You may find a better way to do things. This is the way it is for me. So when I get any kind of messages that tell me how wrong I am, I basically just kind of ignore those because it's not a matter of right or wrong. This is what it is for me. And so you're getting a snapshot, kind of a voyeuristic view of what life is like for me. Also in these videos, I try to hit some key items of importance if you're coming here. Some very factual things that you will need to do, what to expect, um, things to be aware of. So these videos also include that. And then I also have a whole bunch of things that are nice to know. It may not be so important, but it's nice to know. Kind of overlaps between the, the first and the second. So that's the purpose of these videos. If you find use in those, great. If you don't, there's other videos. So I do my best to try to hit those areas that I just mentioned. Questions about Burger War. I had lots of requests for this Burger War idea and as I've gone through them, I've gotten just a couple saying, oh, I'm kind of getting tired of the Burger Wars thing, can you get back to something else? Well, I'm kind of tired of it too. I mean, it was, it was kind of fun, but um, I, for now, I've done all I'm going to do on the Burger Wars. It was, it was a bit of a kick. I've also been asked, could you do Pizza Wars? Uh, no, I don't see myself doing Pizza Wars. One, it would be quite expensive. Two, what am I going to do with all the extra food? I don't eat pizza. I love pizza, but I don't eat that much. Which, quick side note, since I did my last update, I've lost another five pounds. But unfortunately, it's like bailing water out of the Titanic. It seems, it, it seems like it's kind of a frustrating endeavor. But as long as I keep chipping away, you know, ounce by ounce, you know, maybe someday I'll get there. I did take a nasty spill, and so it's probably good that I'm a little fat. It was raining yesterday, and I'm walking down Don Bosco, and I've got shoes on that's not really conducive for that. I actually usually just wear them around the house. I wish I had just worn them around the house instead of walking to Supermax in them. So I've got my umbrella, and it's raining, and I hit something. I don't know what the heck it was, and my foot was eye level. I went up in the air and slammed down on my left hip. I bruised the back of my leg, the middle of my back, but my, la my, my butt side on the left. Oh my goodness, I couldn't sleep last night. I couldn't get comfortable. It's really painful. So why is it good that I'm a little fat? If I weren't a little fat, I probably would have broken a bone. I mean, it, I hit that hard on that concrete. I smashed the umbrella into pieces because I half landed on that and it literally came apart in pieces. I still had a short part of the handle in my hand. Uh, be careful what you wear, be careful how you walk. Uh, accidents can happen.
and here there's no one you can sue if I had to go to the hospital with a broken bone or something that's all on me yeah you probably want to have some sort of health insurance now I keep a, a running list of topics that I want to hit and I usually have five or six in there and it doesn't take long before you know I keep adding to it as I do the videos what happened was I was all set to do a video and I couldn't find my list and for some reason I'm just kind of blanking out well there was a reason I actually you know I go two years here two plus years here without a so much as a sniffle okay do that again no it's not a good photo and then in the last two months I've had the flu twice and both times kind of kicked my butt and when I have the flu and I have a fever I'm just a whiny little baby not, not all the time but when I have the flu I'm just a whiny little baby and things like remembering a list it just doesn't work for me so I put it on Facebook hey I lost my list yeah I know I'm a dummy could you throw in some ideas and a couple of the ideas were things that were on my list so that's good and I'll get to those and then there were some things that would make good video but I can't do them I'll give you a couple examples one how do you get shoes made I'm a size 13 and they don't sell 13 the biggest I can find in Cuenca is size 11 and I know there's shoemakers how do you go about that who's a good one what can I expect for a price how long does it take what do I do for style great questions unfortunately I don't have a clue I brought five pairs with me uh, I'll, I'll probably have five these same five pairs for a long time to come except maybe that ones I slipped in but you know I rotate them around and they're still like new so I can't answer that because I simply don't know and believe it or not when I do these videos I only talk about things that I know or I've got a good local source or two or three that give me the information that I can relay to you and even at that I try to get once I get that point of view I try to verify that so I really try my best to give you accurate information the very best I can I can't tell you what it's like to do the shoes I don't need shoes I can't really afford to go buy shoes that I don't need I mean I'm living okay but the budget is you know I don't have a lot to waste so I can't do that video but it's a great idea so I appreciate it but I can't do it uh, another example is tailoring clothes I haven't had that done but I will be getting it done all of my uh, black jeans they're fitting me like like a sack uh, I have one pair that I hadn't worn in five years that I can now wear but I can't wear them every day so the rest of these I've got a whole bunch of them eight or nine pair of black jeans I'm going to take these and get them tailored so if there's anything of interest at all I'll do a video on that if it's not that interesting it's just a point of comment then I'll bring it up in one of the videos as one of these this type of video where I'm just hitting some subjects now if there's a topic that you're interested in you know please send me a message and if I can do it I will do it I get a lot of questions on uh, the comments on these videos and I get a fair amount of emails and I try to respond to everyone I don't think I've ever missed any but sometimes it might take a while so if you have any questions comments you know feel free I want to give you a quick update on the Cuenca-relocate.com as regular viewers know um, I created this site based on a number of requests of people that are coming here hey cough up the information that you've got who did you use for this and this and this and this so when I get there I know who I can rely on because you had a good experience and it made perfect sense I just didn't do it for a long time but I decided finally to do it so I put together a website 
my own expense, I'm going to mention a few of these things because of some Facebook trolls that are trying to make it sound like I'm trying to get rich on something. <clears throat> I put together this website at my expense, my time, I charge nothing. So I take people that I know that are looking for work, that I have personal experience with, or I have a connection that has a personal experience. In other words, so that I can vouch for these people and feel good about it. And so I put them on their various categories, whether it's moving, whether it's a guide, uh, a driver, cultural guide, uh, cleaners. I've got six or seven house cleaners available that are absolutely excellent that are all in a, a kind of a tough situation. Uh, husbands lost job on a couple of them and they lost some, uh, some of their steady work. And so I've actually put two people in that never cleaned for me, but I know uh, based on the situation that they're good and reliable. Now, so that website is there. I'm not making anything off it. You pay whoever it is, you pay them direct. That's how it goes. I simply make the initial arrangements. I got that website going a week or so ago, maybe maybe 10 days ago. And so far, placed three people have jobs that did not have jobs before. So I thank you for that. <clears throat> the feedback on all of them has been very good. So I hope that this continues to grow and expand and that we can help more people that are good, trustworthy, honest people find employment. And that way, if you're looking, you don't have to roll the dice and hope. And in case you didn't know, there are some labor law issues that you have to be careful of in this country. If they're part-time, you don't have to be so concerned with it, but they can come back at you if, if you fire, the, let's say even if they were stealing from you, if you hired somebody and they were stealing from you and you fire them, you still owe them money. You still owe them compensation. There are perks and benefits along the way, double pay two months of the year. There's a whole series of things, health insurance benefits, retirement benefits that you've got to pony up, but under certain circumstances. One of the reasons I ask, and she agreed to do it in return for me helping her on the foundation, Adriana is, basically we're calling her the director of this website. Because she's a lawyer, she can keep an eye on these things and keep everybody out of trouble, keep the employee out of trouble, keep, uh, they're actually independent contractors, and keep you out of trouble from running into these kind of problems. And if you decide that you did want somebody full-time rather than part-time, she would be there to draw up a contract for you to give you protection. So, uh, so far it's successful. I'm happy with it. I look forward to a couple months from now when I can kind of phase out of it completely. But in the meantime, I will be there uh, to help you out with it. Now I mentioned the foundation, an update on the foundation, Foundation San Martin. This is Adriana's baby. This is what she gave up her partnership and her law firm for. Uh, it was approved. Now I don't know. I, I hope I don't get this wrong. I don't. The path for these things is different in Ecuador. Like what is it? And I don't completely understand. And it wasn't important enough for me to drill down on it. But I know October, the middle of October, she received approval to proceed with this foundation. I'm not quite sure what that entails, but she received a proof. She worked about a month to get to that point. After that, then she has to draw up uh, the vision of the foundation, and it's an actual uh, legal document. I think in her case it was 12, 14 pages. Exactly what they do, how they account for the funds, who is going to be officer of the company, there has to be a president, a vice president, a secretary, and a treasurer. That's required by their law. She has asked and for several weeks I declined and eventually I agreed to be the vice president of, of the operation. Um, 
it's it's exciting in a way. I, I just had concerns that if they put my name with it, now you've got yet another foundation with some Ringo that's behind the scenes or in front of the scenes. And in the past, there hasn't been the best of track records in that situation. I mean, there's people that have somehow lined their pockets and, you know, take expensive vacations. And so I was concerned about that. And in our conversation, she wasn't concerned with that because she knows, you know, she's in charge of this and she knows what's going on and that's not going to happen. Besides her being attorney, they have the similar thing like being disbarred and she can't afford to go that route. But she has faith and trust in me as well. So I have conceded to be part of that. And uh, my part will be, I volunteered, that I will try to do the fundraising with the English speaking community. So get ready. Um, I hope I will not be obnoxious. What I'm going to do is when the time comes, which we're about two weeks away, I will roll out the, the specifics of what's going on with this foundation, exactly what this money is going to go for. I can tell you right now, it's for children that are underprivileged, that are children of unwed mothers, families who have lost their employment, they can't afford the, the cost for education, they can't afford good lunches, they can't afford clothes to wear to school because they have to wear uniforms. This foundation is directed at kids that have need and will be in Osway. It's not just Cuenca, it will be all of Osway. <coughs> Excuse me, still getting over this, this flu a little bit. As a matter of fact, if I got comments on on the last couple of videos about my low energy and yeah I I had some low energy I was just kind of but hey, what can you say that's an update on the foundation on the website on a few other things um, the next video I'm going to cover some phone apps that I left off the first one and they're very important particularly the ECU 911 as a matter of fact, you might want to just go ahead and download that one and take a look at it. English speaking 911 service free of charge. So, enjoy some of the clips that I put in here. <laughs> some of the things that I've been doing for the past week or so. Um, to show you that there is a life beyond sitting here and talking to a camera. I live a interesting life. I live an energetic life. I'm living a good life. And yet again, it keeps coming up, um, last thing, no, Adriana is not my girlfriend. No, Sandy is not my girlfriend. This is a mutually beneficial sharing of the house and I'm helping her with the foundation. She's helping with that website. And sometime this coming year, hopefully January, February, I will be able to release myself to do some traveling that I wanted to do and have all my property here in the house protected so I don't have to get rid of it or sell it I've got, and I've got a place to come back to because I can only be gone for six months out of the year uh, under the new laws. So that's what it's about. We both benefit from the situation and when I'm gone I'm still paying half of the rent so you know that's you know three-story house you know to pay $200 a month on the rent it's good for her too so everybody wins. I was asked about if I come here to Ecuador, what will it be like if I want to find a wife, if I want to find a mate, if I want to, I'll, you know, I'll just say it's like if I want to live a life that includes sex, what will I do? And I really struggled with this. Um, she really laid out a good argument. And so I put it up on Facebook uh, just to get some ideas because. I haven't been involved in that. I have not been mate searching. I have lived a celibate life since I've been here. 
Uh, part of that is uh, due to some medication that I have to take for a few months yet. And once that medicine is gone, then maybe I'll be more inclined to be involved in this kind of activity. But <clears throat> to date, this really hasn't been on my radar. So I appreciate her question. And I, as I thought about it, this is actually a good question. If you're coming here as a single person, assuming that you're not dead yet, you probably want to know what are your chances of having some kind of relationship, be it an adult relationship, or be it something like a permanent marriage, what could you do? So I've been doing some research on it. Now I did a little research some time ago on a video, which is the most watched video I've got, but it, it really was a different topic. That was about older men that were looking to move to a country where they could essentially buy a young girl. And I got enough requests on that, I decided to shut it down in the video because this is not that kind of country. It's far from that. Can you find somebody like that? Yeah, I'm sure you can find something like that anywhere. But this is not that kind of country. And in that video I said, you can go to Thailand, you can go to the Philippines, you can go to Cambodia, you can go to Vietnam, Dominican Republic. Those places are like that. Ecuador is not like that. So you're barking up the wrong tree. But this lady's question, was a very good and legitimate question. I'm just a normal person. I'm coming there. I'm retired. Her husband died sometime. I apologize if I'm saying more than I should, but I'm trying to keep it. Nobody knows who you are. Her husband died a little over a year ago and she hasn't wanted to see anybody, but she knows that she's beginning to get to that point. And when she comes here, she just wants to know, how do you go about that? How do you meet people? The gringo community is not that large. Her Spanish is, is a matter of a handful of words, like a lot of us that came here. So what does she do? It's not like she can go out and just strike up a conversation with locals, at least for a long time. And there's not that many gringos, and half of the gringos are probably not anybody she'd want to know about. So. She has such limited options, and I believe she's correct. But I also think in doing a little research this last week, it doesn't mean it's not doable. I think it's easier in some places for both men and women than it is in Ecuador, particularly in Cuenca. Cuenca is a very conservative-minded city. Quito and on the coast, they're much more open-minded. And so you will have an easier time in Quito or along the coast than you will in Cuenca. Here, if you're a guy and you want to go out, with, let's say you're a 40 year old guy and you want to go with, out a 30 year old woman, you still need to go talk to the parents and get permission. It's, it's that kind of old timey conservative thing. I will continue to do some research and I hope to put together a video that's not crass or crude but tasteful and useful for people that are interested in this topic. That's all I got today. I'll see you next time. You know you could. Hello, I'm Sandy, and let me tell you about something I can help you with. Cell phones in car, how to use buses and taxis, learn and see areas of Cuenca, visit local towns. If you want to open a bank account, I can help you with shopping and help with landing lot. And I'm going to teach you real prices. I am your friend that will help you get set up in Cuenca. Thank you very much. <laughs>